popping up red line here. That's right, just like the GT3, which when you get it up there, it is life changing. You know, it's made you realize you don't really need multi million dollar cars because most people are not capable of making this car do what it's capable of. Right. This That's car exactly is so right. much better than you are. Yes. By, by you, I mean me. Yeah. That I, that I can enjoy it and save $750,000. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Jay Lowe's Garage, the car featuring today a 2023 Porsche. This is the GT4 RS, just rolls off the tongue, that little name there like it does. But what an amazing automobile this is. This one belongs to a friend of mine who does one of the most popular automotive podcasts, uh, Spike's Car Radio, Spike Ferrison. Spike, come on in. Good to see you, my friend. Hi, Jay. Yeah, good it's to good see It's good to be you. back. He and Jerry Seinfeld are probably two of the biggest Porsche enthusiasts in the world. <laughs> and you guys have a movie coming out. Yeah, yeah, we do. Next year on next, Netflix. On Netflix, okay. Yeah. The Pop Tart movie. Pop the Pop Tart. Pop Tart movie. This car was paid for with Pop Tart money. Wow, very good. <laughs> and know, I do have a partner in the car, my co host, Paul Zuckerman. Oh, okay. This is what we call a Plan Z car. Okay. Co owners. Co owners. You know, it, it's funny to me because to the uninitiated, this would just be another 911, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole different car, it's smaller. It's mid-engine, not rear-engine, correct? which makes a tremendous difference in the handling. I haven't driven this one yet, but I got to drive one when I was back east. I was astounded. It yeah. was, it, it's pretty amazing. It feels smaller than 911. It feels tighter than 911. And I, I don't want to get killed for saying this, but I might buy this before I'd buy a 911. Absolutely. I mean, I, I just fell in love with it. Fast, handles. I'm pretty impressed. How long have you had it now? This car, only we've only had it about a month. Okay. It has about 300 miles on it, maybe 400 miles. What I noticed right away when I jumped into it was size. 911s kept, are getting bigger and wider right. and longer, right. right? You get into this car, and it has a 911 engine in it. It has a GT3 engine, the same engine that they race G, GT3 Cup Series and they put in the GT3 road cars. And that's 493 horsepower, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Here it is, on the, on the GT3 RS, it's a little more, it's a little 510, depending on who's testing. Well, <laughs> in that sort of theory of General Motors, Buick, Chevy, the Cayman cannot be. Yes, Yeah. except this, ki this car kind of is better right, in but, different ways. But you're not allowed <laughs> to say that, really. I'm saying it. Right. I'm right. saying you it. heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Spike speaks up. And, 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 and you can go to YouTube and you can watch the Comparo videos and you can see how this car is a, just a hair slower up to uh, than a GT3 RS up to 140. And then this car is faster, 140, 150, 160. Really? But for me, the difference is size and the engine placement and the balance that that creates in a turn. The car just turns on rails. This is also a car that's kind of geared towards the street, whereas a GT3 RS is, is geared a little more towards the track, and you feel that in this car, which surprised me. It's, it's funny because after you, I've driven enough 911s to realize, well, they've done away with that rear bias thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. When you drive an early car, I have a, a 71, and it's fun. It, to be able to learn how to do it. But when you lose it, <laughs> you suddenly, what happened? You just, you, <laughs> That's you, right. You just spun around. Yeah. And what uh, a Porsche engineers have been able to do to, to negate that. Now, a lot, of, a lot of the older guys, they like it. They like having the ability to watch the other guys spin out while they don't, you know. Mm -hmm. But as a safer, better handling car. But then you get in this and you realize, you know what the difference is? It's the difference between I have a 2005 Ford GT. What a machine. Oh, it's a great car. Which is a road car that looks like a race car. Then I got the 2017 Porsche GT, same serial number, number 12, by the way. And it's like night and day. I mean, I'm turning like, I'm turning like that. Even in, in the, uh, the Corvette as well, even the new C8 Corvette, it literally, I, I, I couldn't believe because I would, when I would drive that on a track, you'd see the front end move. Okay, you'd move this, you're turning from right here, mm -hmm. right as if there's a, a pole there and you've just spun on it. 
And that's what's amazing. That's what I, I felt with this, too. This is yeah. the extreme example of that. It is. And uh, it's, it's beautiful. Um, the color is Oslo Blue, right. which is a paint-to-sample color from, I think, 1962 that was originally on the 356. Right. Um, we did one of, they, they have this little hut called Special Wishes at Porsche. Right. So after a car is made, they, you can bring it into this other place and they can charge you a whole bunch of money for stupid things. Right. But what I thought the aesthetic of the exterior of the car needed, because this has a, a, got a Visoc package, so a lot of carbon fiber on right. it. Right. But all the carbon fiber on the hood looked to be too much. And Andreas Pruniger, who designed the car, had this done on his car, right. which is they painted this stripe that goes down and then goes down onto the swan neck wing on the back that really, for us, makes this car like a perfect, beautiful thing to look it at. It really does, because sometimes a little too much carbon fiber. Right. It's like when uh, hybrid cars first came out and they had hybrid on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a hybrid. You know, okay, we know it's a hybrid. <laughs> then it gets smaller. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. I, I like the look of that. It, it, it gets the point across. Oh, I guess that must be a carbon fiber hood. Yeah, yeah. We took delivery at the Porsche Experience Center, which if you have the opportunity to do that in Atlanta or here in L.A., you should do it. What they do is they have a little uh, birthday party for your car right. and they, they pull off the sheet and they right. serve you drinks and they have little candies that are the same color of your car. Well, you gotta <clears> have But that. most importantly, you get to take a car like it out on the track and they show you what the car can do. Right, right. So we were able to go in a GT4 RS, do turns, do skid pads without ruining your car. Or you can ruin one of their cars. Right. But you get to feel you know, the upper limits of what the car can do, which you're not gonna feel on the road. And this is carbon fiber roof as well? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. there's carbon fiber and, uh, and along the sides here, you know, uh, along and so the And to initiated, it's rear wheel drive. Yes. Not a front, not a four wheel drive, just because a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? You've uh, got the open, the engine is right there in your cockpit. Yeah. You know, if you look back, you've got air intakes on the sides instead of mirrors that are. That's right. Where well, you normally would see a smaller back seat in a 911. Right. You've got the engine right you've there. You've got the engine. And we were talking about it a minute ago, like, how come you're not? It must be hot in that car. It's not. I don't know what they put on top of that thing, but it's not communicating any heat forward, which is. Interesting. Yeah. Very Fantastic nice. engineering. Well, it looks great. Uh, obviously, you got the uh, upgraded brakes. Yeah, it has a it has a Visoc package on it, which is important. It's and let's got explain people know the Visoc package. That's one of those words you see in the magazine. And yeah. You have no idea how to say it until someone says it correctly. Did I say it correctly? I, you did say it Visoc. correctly. Visoc. But like I have Brosophere motorcycle. Hey, I like that bro bike. Well, it's not a no, it's not bro. It's it's bro. You know, and I, yeah. Is it Wisicket? What is it? A Wisec. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. You go. yeah. It's a way for them to charge you a whole lot of money but it does bring lightness to the car. Right, right. Um, or you can skip a couple of lunches and yes, you'll be fine. Yes, yes. But what do you save, about 108 pounds? You know, like that's that. really true. When I asked Andreas Pruniger about the GT3s and how much less they were gonna weigh, he says, I like to tell people, why don't you lose 100 pounds? <laughs> Stop making it my problem. <laughs> he wasn't joking, yeah, but, but it was a very good point. Yeah, but because because people are uh, driving around without radios and, and air conditioning, what happens in the rain? Right. You lose 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really true. It really is the driver. I always tell the story. Back in the 80s, I would take my CBX motorcycle up to the rock store. Mm -hmm. And one of these flat track guys who's quite famous, uh, I, I, I won't use his name because I, I don't have permission, but he comes up on an 883 Harley, just a stock Harley. And all the Kawasaki, Suzuki guys, they got the leathers with the double thing on the, on the, on the yep. knuckles. Looks great. And you go, oh, let's go, let's go up. It, that's when, when the crest was still open at Malibu, you know, mm -hmm. the, the snake, the snake at Malibu. You, if you're not familiar with the snake, you can go on the YouTube and see people falling off there <laughs> all the time. It looks enclosed for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he gets up there and he, he's literally banging the handlebars, bang, on the ground, going inside. Just on an 883 stock wow, Harley wow. against all the KZY Suzuki mm -hmm. 1400 CZ. So it, it, it really is, it yeah. is the driver. Yeah. It really is the driver. Uh, now everything, of course, on a Porsche is functional. These actually do bring air. They relieve the pressure that's right. on, in the wheel well. Right. Apparently, that's helping with aerodynamics. You've got the uh, scoops here on the hoods here that are, that are bringing air into the car and cooling brakes. You've got the air on the side. And you've got these, if you look down by the lower wheel well here, 
See how the uh, wheel well stops and it kind of opens up to direct air into the intakes here in oh. the back. Oh, okay. Which is uh, a first for the Cayman platform. Had you driven one of these before <laughs> you ordered it? I, I didn't. Uh, Johnny Lieberman from Motor Trend brought the press car over, I think, that you drove right. and offered to let me drive it. And I, I wanted to wait. It's such a special thing to drive a new car when you right, get it, right. and you only get that first drive kinda once. Kind of like the wedding night. Yes, yeah. exactly. So maybe. you chose to wait. <laughs> I did choose to right, wait, thanks. and I'm happy I did. There you are. There and you I are. remember that drive. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's nice about Porsche. It's not going to let you down. You know, it's not the kind of, well, I, just, I hate this thing. You know, the only, I had a reverse experience uh, when the Porsche Dakar came out. Mm -hmm which is sort of the off-road version of 911. I thought, well, that's just the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Yes. You take a beautiful car, handling, got all the things, and you, you jack it up, and you got the cans on the roof, and the, you know, I, I just said, oh, I just thought it was just a marketing gimmick. Then I drove it, it became my favorite 911, because you could just go down a fire road, you could beat the crap out of it. You had the whole undercarriage was protected. Yeah. You, uh, you could pound over it the way right. you would a Bronco or any of those sort of off-road cars. Yet it was still a Porsche. It was comfortable on the highway. It had the, uh, I guess, the year-round tires that were you could take off-road. You had this kind of ground collision. You're not breaking splitters and all that kind of stuff. And I just, because I realize all the fun is between 40 and 120. Mm -hmm. You know, you're getting on exit ramps. You, getting it sideways, it's real. It was just a fabulous car. Are you on fire roads a lot? I like the old <laughs> fire roads occasionally, yeah, yeah. Where are those fire roads Oh, around they're all here? around. <laughs> oh, they're, they're filled with them. Yeah. I hear, I've been hearing a ton of great stuff about that car. I, I thought the same thing when it was announced. How do you use this? Right. I'm not, I don't live near fire roads. If you, maybe if you were a professional. But you do, you do live near fire, you're in Malibu. Well, I just thought, well, yeah, but I, I, I prefer to be on the road. But, right. I, but I thought if I were maybe a skier, I lived in Colorado, or yeah. I was in Switzerland, you know, that a Dakar would work in, the, in a snowy environment if I was going to Tahoe more. Well, but the, what I've been hearing, like from yeah. folks like you, whose opinions I trust, is this car is spectacular. Well, that's what's great. You know, the fun thing about old Miatas is you can take them out and beat the heck out of them, mm -hmm. and, and if it breaks, yeah, you can fix it, it's not a big problem. That's the feeling I got with that. I could use it as intended. I mean, I've got a Carrera GT, which I love, mm -hmm. but any undulation in the yes. road is a broken <laughs> splitter. It's, 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 it's like a nightmare. Yeah. You, you really can't mistreat it. Yeah. And this Dakar, I mean, I couldn't break it. And it, you hear stuff hit the inside, it, it hit inside the wheel well. It, it, it's just great. Wow. It, it's using a Porsche like a Jeep, which is which is the most yeah, fun I've yeah. had in a long time. Yeah. Are you going to get one? I think they're all sold out. I can get you yeah. one. Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> let's get back. Let's get back. Let's get back to this. You know guy. who just got one? Our friend from New York. Oh, Jerry got one. He 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 uh, was hearing the same things that you're telling us right it's now. It's so funny because I had this discussion with him not that long ago. So that's I think what kicked it off. Yeah, because I was really impressed. I realized. You know, when you have these high-performance cars, you, you have to be responsible. But to feel like you're doing something, you've got to get into illegal speeds almost, and you mm -hmm. don't want to do that right. too often. With this, with this Dakar, it was just fabulous. You could just, you, you see a dirt road, and think, oh, what's it going to lead down to a quarry, mm -hmm. put down, slide around, and you couldn't, you, you couldn't break it. Yeah. It's just unbelievable, yeah. just unbelievable. Fantastic. Well, let's try and break this. Now, let's see what, uh, <laughs> can we see that? Can we see the engine? Can you open it up here? Yeah, it's on your side. Okay. You can, uh, you'll see it right down there in the sill, that little rear button there. Let's see, it is, oh, here we are. Feel the lightness, feel the lightness. It is, it is light, very light, yeah. Well, obviously, if we were opening a 911, the engine would be right here. Mm-hmm. Here you can see it truly is mid-engine. It's right where the back seat would be. And, you know, Porsche will tell you that because they move the engine forward, the exhaust has to be a little longer, and that's what the reduction in horsepower is that right. comes from that. Okay. A lot of folks think that's a big lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we thought when we bought this car, you know, we thought, you know, we'll keep this for a little while, but it's probably going to be a little too extreme for us, and we'll probably move on to the GT3 RS after. 
the surprise was this car is so fun to drive. Right. We now don't want to get rid of it. It's such a, a, a great model in the Porsche lineup. A very unexpected and, and like you said, could be the one. Could be the one. Yeah, and it's how much less is it than a 911? Uh, 15 grand, something like that, 20 maybe? This was an expensive car because yeah. of paint to sample and the right. special wishes. But right. yeah, you could do a limited spec and get it cheaper than a GT3. Right, right. I okay. mean, that's that that's the comp. I don't know it, that you would it, you'd be deciding between this and a 911. Yeah. I mean, to me, there's no contest. Right, right. I think you're deciding between GT cars when you make decisions like this. And it's funny. This I I I'll make a terrible analogy here. If you ever driven a 55 T-Bird without the Continental wheel kit, it feels like this. <laughs> if you're driven a, a 55 T-Bird with the Continental wheel kit, oh my God. I mean, because mm -hmm. that's, I mean, just what does an engine weigh? Let's say 400, 350 pounds, something like that. And you move it back here, obviously it, it's going to, there's going to be a pendulum effect. It's how, just, how are they keeping the heat out of the cockpit? You know, you have amazing heat shields. Uh, we have a friend of ours, he makes something called torchware. He gives me a face cloth, okay? I pick any red hot exhaust system, I, with it in my hand, I grab it. I mean, I feel warm, but no burn, no heat. It's amazing. Wow. It's amazing the stuff they have that can, uh, yeah. plus you have coatings now. Mm -hmm. You know, on my Doble steam car, uh, the inside of the burner is 3,000 degrees and eventually it would burn through, even in canal and almost anything. Wow. Well, we talk to some guys at NASA, oh, we got a coating. Okay, they come with this coating. Okay, they got it on, on, on a sheet of metal. Okay, I put it in my hand. Guy has a blowtorch. <laughs> and I, you know, my hand is not uncomfortable. Right. But it's like, what's that? But I mean, I see it, it's, it's red here and it's not coming through. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, the, that's the world you live in now, so. Uh, well, you don't feel it. Yeah. You forget it's there. Pretty amazing. And I imagine all the ducting pulls it out underneath. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, you can see this w the way the the uh, the rear is here. Pretty mm -hmm. amazing. And you have a, a trunk as well. I imagine you could put a box of chocolates in there and drive to Palm Springs. Tennis rackets and it for me. Mean. Oh, tennis rackets. Tennis yeah. rackets. As long as it's not golf. <laughs> no, I don't have time for golf. Yeah, tennis <laughs> I can do in 20 minutes. I'm out of there. <laughs> Very nice. Anything in the front? Yeah, there's a boot in the front as well. How, how big a boot? Is it bigger than the rear? About the same size here. Notice how we have stickers too instead of badges. Oh, is that weight right? Weight reduction, yeah. Oh, You're that's saving a lot of weight by taking oh, yeah, out that 20 funny. pound badge that yeah. they used to put on. Oh, actually a pretty good sized trunk, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You could, you could easily travel to Palm Springs. You put your tennis rackets in the back and your pickleball rackets in the front. <laughs> We don't talk about pickup. As you get older, you it's a cruise ship game. Yeah, it's cruise. not even a sport. Send your letters directly to Spike <laughs> Car Radio. You can. Okay. Pickleball. Um, and this, uh, so you, uh, this pops out, eh? Yeah. To yeah. Reach. Well, that's interesting, that they just sort of cover that. Is, is this just a pop-out piece, or? Usually, uh, in this part of the the frunk, yeah, that that piece pops out, and there's some maintenance stuff in there. But but Porsche now is offering, and I think. It comes with all new cars. You get a year of maintenance on the car, right. so you let them deal but with I'm that But I'm surprised stuff. you just can't check this. Yes. But you, you have to go through all this. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it could be a design flaw that huh. you found. Well, there you go. Interesting. <laughs> but I'm impressed with the size of the, uh, of the boot here. Now, what does that handle there do? Um, it lets you out if someone throws oh, you into oh, the trunk. In the tr <laughs> Boy, if, you, if someone puts you in that trunk, and you're crouched down. Oh, that's right. You have that law now where you, you can't. Uh, what? You can't be thrown into trunks? No, every or... trunk has to be able to be opened. Yeah, you have to. Right, that, right. That's the law on yeah. all new cars. So yes. Assuming some, I don't know who would fit in there, but yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. It's the Mafiosa Act of okay. eight, 1986. <laughs> yeah. that... Cool. All right. Well, let, <laughs> let's, take it, let's take it for a spin. Let's see what she does. Let's drive. Yeah, I think you'll be impressed with this car. Here we go. Yeah, 
Yeah, but you feel the smallness, right? Right, right. Sight lines are not intrusive, you know, it's not over here like mm -hmm. a lot of cars. Well, a great sound. Yeah. That's with the sound off. Right. <laughs> Is that off? That was off. If we want to turn it on, now you there you go, right behind your head. Boy, it really is, yeah. That's better than a cup of coffee. I know. Anything's better than a cup of coffee. <laughs> well, you don't drink coffee. No, no. I don't God. understand that. I can't, I don't it's know. cars and coffee. It's I, not just cars. I don't know how people can stand. My first cup of coffee ever is with Jerry Seinfeld. I know. But the whole foundational principle of what we do together. And it was, ho it was just horrible, that coffee. <laughs> Come on. I don't like hot liquid. I don't like hot liquids. Yeah. You know, oil is a hot liquid. I don't drink it, though. <laughs> the thing you know, I like about these cars is the seamlessness of it. Yeah. You know, so many times, at least in America, you take a big V8 and you turbocharge it or supercharge it or, or, or one of those things, and it would just be, it would be faster but it doesn't sound efficient. It's a, mm -hmm. Just a lot of you know, a lot of noise. Whereas this has a, a sewing machine quality of you know, like a, like a needle moving a gazillion times uh, through, through a piece of cloth. You know, it's, en engineering. That's engineering. You're feeling. That's what Porsche does it well. Do. McLaren does it well. Mm -hmm. Even the Ford GTs did it pretty well. It does feel. If it wraps around you, it does feel so it, much smaller. It does. It reminded me of the 993 series 911 when I first sat in it. Right. And that that's something worth noting. Not a lot of people are talking about it is size and smallness. Right, it's hard right. to get smallness because of DOT standards. But when someone pulls it off with a racing engine and a wing... Well, someday I'll let you drive my 26R, the Lotus. Yeah. That weighs 1,275 pounds. Wow, wow. We took the block out which is cast iron, mm -hmm. and recast the block in aluminum. So we saved 45 pounds. Wow. Uh, took it to two liter. It's now about 200, two and a quarter horse. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it, it put a five-speed quaif box in it. It just screams. It's just unbelievable. To be in a car that light, it, it's like nothing else. And this is a light car. What is this, 29 change? 31? I think 31. Yeah. 31. But that's a real world 31. That's with fluids. Yeah. And yeah. It's not as light as you would want it, but it's about as light as you can make it. Right. And it's lighter than the GT4. Right, right. By about, uh, I know the horsepower is about 80 more, so. But they've engineered lightness too. The so feeling of light. The, the thing I find fascinating is there's almost nothing you could do now to make this faster. Mm -hmm. than what the factory gets out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the idea is, if, you know, in the old days, the first thing you did was change your radio. Then right. the manufacturers got smart and they put up their, and then, they, then you bought headers. Well, now you got factory headers that are better mm -hmm. than any any aftermarket guy could ever come up with. Now you famously first drove this with Donald Osborne, didn't right, you? Right, yes. Yeah. Was that here or was that on that the East Coast? That was in Rhode Island, yeah, yeah. And what was that like, doing a driving test in Rhode Island? Wonderful. And what did Donald think about the car? Oh, he loved the car. Yeah. yeah. He was very impressed. I mean, how can you not? It's everything 911 is, except just a little sharper. Yeah. And mid-engined. Uh, yeah. And more balanced. I mean, that's the real key. <laughs> Break-in period for the car. Uh, is, this, is this still on the break-in period? <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. These don't have break-in period. They do. They absolutely do. Oh, they do. Do we pay attention to them? Maybe. Oh, I thought. No, I thought. Uh, are you sure? What is, I'm positive. What is the break-in period? I, a little over a thousand miles. Oh, okay. I mean, is it? Does it restrict your performance? They recommend that you restrict your performance. Right. Right. Oh, okay. You can then interpret that any way you you want. Well, no, some cars you cannot rev it past like forty one hundred. Oh yeah, no, and, no. Until you hit, you know, 
uh, 80 mi you know, th 300 miles. Now, now you get another couple hundred miles. Right. That seems dangerous. Uh, we like to respect the break-in period, but right. not all the time. Right, right. <laughs> so go have fun. I talked to this guy uh, who used to sell his cars, Bert Olander. He used to sell cars to Steve McQueen. Right. And he would always say, yes, you respect the break-in period, but have fun, have fun every once in a while. And his advice was just don't don't get on it and and drive for an hour above the RPM limit. Here's, here's, this is my thing I do with all my cars for extended times. I don't I don't pull away until the needles are off the stop. Yeah, yeah. Not oil temperature because that takes too long. Yeah. But uh, water temperature. Okay. Mm -hmm. 100, 180 degree. Oh, okay. I'm all right. Okay. Yeah, you told me that yeah. once. Start your car up. Roll a couple of emails. Right. Reply to a text, by then your car's ready to go. Right, I right. still do that. I did that this morning, yeah, right yeah. in this car. Well, the best advice, and yes. this works for everybody, if you never want to crunch reverse, hit second first. Ah. And you will never crunch reverse. I see guys go, <laughs> and, I go and I go, put it in second. I'm, go, I'm <laughs> right. backing up. No, put it in second. Now I'll go to reverse. Oh, right. what? Because they're on the same shaft. Yes. That's good. I like to never get on a motorcycle when you're late. Yeah, yeah. Never get on a motorcycle when you're late. I like it for the engineering sound. That's why I like it. that seamlessness of of shifting. I mean, I tolerate these PDKs and other transmissions like this. Yeah. Because they're better and faster than I am. Yes. So okay, they can do it quick. Okay. So then I like. I prefer the manual, but I realize, you know, they can do it better than I do. That's right. How do you feel in the sport seats? I can't drive a car like this without a sport seat. I need something to hold me, and these seats just hold you perfectly. Oh, they're very nice. I, I like them. But I have to admit, there's something about. I have a Lancia Aurelia over there, a 58. It's got a big, comfortable leather chair. And yeah. you go, boy, this is really comfortable. <laughs> and of course, you, you can't really pull crazy G-forces with that thing, so it's not that big a deal. <laughs> with the teacup sliding down the table. Yeah, yeah. Stopping it. You've got a 9,000 RPM red line. That's right, just like the GT. When you get it up there, it is life changing. You know, it's made you realize you don't really need multi million dollar cars because most people are not capable of making this car do what it's capable of. Right. This That's car exactly is so right. much better than you are. Yes. By, by you, I mean me. Yeah. That I, that I can enjoy it and save $750,000. That's right. And like we were talking about, if you get the Porsche Experience Center delivery, You'll be taken to those upper limits yeah. in one of their cars, and you'll learn a little bit more about what your car can do. It's it's so much more capable and going so much further <laughs> than you will go. Yeah, it's exactly right. Putting on Superman's suit is an oft used analogy that any of these GT cars make you a superhero right. behind the wheel. You know, well, you know my favorite thing about Superman. You ever watch the? You ever see the original? Yeah. Remember he'd stand like this, hands on his chest, yes. and, and they'd fire bullets and they'd bounce off. Mm -hmm. And then the guy would go click, click, and then throw the gun on the Superman and go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Remember he would die? Because he didn't want to get hit with a rubber gun. <laughs> bullets are fine. Now let me ask you something. You say you own this car with another guy. Yes. Uh, is that difficult when the other person scratches it or mistreats it? No, that we apply the hot potato principle, which is if you're with the hot potato, you're responsible for the hot potato. Right. So something happens today, that's on me. So this is my co-host, Paul Zuckerman, who's been on your show. Right, yeah, well, Paulie's so a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah Paulie. So we uh, own cars together. Uh, in this case, uh, this car we got directly from Borgia. We, right. we, we were both on the title. and. You know, people ask us, well, well, not just that, what about when you want to use it and he wants to use it? Right. That doesn't happen with us. We have car collections. We're both very, very laid yes, back. Yes, I'm the exact same way. It's like, to me, I, I never fight with my wife. If right. you want it, that's fine. Whatever you want. Okay, I, it's really not that big a deal to me. 
I will do anything to avoid fighting with with with, with a spouse. It's like when I was a kid, I could never watch shows like Maud because they screamed at each other. <laughs> you know, I will scream at people outside my house. Yes. But in my house, I don't want to scream. I want to get away from the screaming. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's the whole basis for entertainment, by the way. <laughs> we want a break from everything. Right. Entertain right. it. Don't tell us about what's happening in the world. Give us a break. You know, when it comes to insurance, when it comes to registration, it doesn't. It's whoever right. bought the car, right, then right. Then they take care of it. You have to be laid back. We don't have contracts. We don't have. We we just split the payments or split the money, and it's, right, the, it's right. that simple. That's right. And That's right. Uh, and you know, it's gone wrong. Uh, Zuckerman left the keys to our eighty-seven nine eleven in his parking lot, and a guy on drugs stole it <laughs> and joyrided it for a week. But did he wreck it? No, he enjoyed himself. Oh. When we got it back, it was filled with porn tapes and a... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, a bunch of drug paraphernalia. Wow. <laughs> but we got a good laugh out of it. Yeah, yeah. And it cleaned up just fine. And then the Beverly Hills Police Department did a great job of tracking it down and finding it for us. And uh, the car was... And which car was, was that? Good story. It was just an 87 911. Wow. But Zuckerman... Because he, it was on his watch, he felt the heat for that one. Right, right. I, I come home with a scratched wheel, I feel the heat, I go, hey, this happened, I'll take care of it. Right. That, that's kind of how it works. Yeah. But uh, if both of us die in an accident, nobody's going to know who knows who what. Right, <laughs> there's, right. no, right. there's no paperwork or contract. It's not your anything. problem. It's not my problem. Exactly right. But unless you have a friend like that, don't enter into any sort yeah. of arrangement yeah. like that. car came from our friends in Porsche Clearwater in right. Florida, who uh, phoned us up. They're friends of the show now, and uh, they were the ones who got the application and helped us with paint to sample. Andreas Pruniger from the GT department at Porsche also advised on some of the special wishes stuff. Right. You know, the magnesium wheels that we, that we painted silver and the, uh, the painted bonnet in the back. And, you know, we, we really thought a lot about it and, and how to bring a cool car to the Porsche community that someday right. when we let go, we'll live on and have a nice story. Boy, this is something you can just drive all day long. What? Yeah, now we're moving. You think you're going fast, you realize there's a UPS truck right on your ass. <laughs> how is that even possible? <laughs> He's moving. He's got deliveries to make. That's right. Yeah. He's got a tough schedule. And no air conditioning in those cars. Wow. He wants out of that truck. It's just such satisfaction in something that does something well. Yeah. You know? yeah. The other thing I like about this, whatever drives me crazy, you drive some supercar and it's like a buzzing. What, what's that? Yeah. But there's something going on. Yes. There's something making a noise. And you're just trying to enjoy the drive and concentrate. That's what I like. This car feels like it's solid billet. Your car to fill it. I just got the Porsche customer survey yesterday. Yeah. Which I usually answer honestly. Yeah. I'll talk about the great salesman, I'll talk about the car. I said, is there anything you're dissatisfied with? And I just sat there. I go, nothing. No, nothing. There's not a single, I don't have any notes. I have no notes for this thing. You know, you think these cars are expensive until you try to buy the parts and then you go, it would cost 10 times as much to yeah. buy each part and assemble it. Yeah. No. That is the problem for buyers, is the dealers selling these cars for above sticker and putting them out of reach for a lot of people. Right. But from what I understand, this car is not a limited car, which means they'll make as many as they can sell and as they can make within a window, and prices should come down. And if you have the money to get one. Really good. Listen to that. When I was a kid, I get the car magazines, and there was a picture of a Mercedes sedan on a heavily banked track at the factory. And I always had that picture in my mind, and I thought it was so cool. Then I was in Germany, I was with the guys, they go, here, take the car there, here, pull onto this track. And I got on the track and it was, oh my God, this is the track. <laughs> it was only like, a mile track or half a mile, but you literally got this way, uh -huh. and I and I got to do that, and I wow. thought, oh man, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, you were talking about a Ford GT, and you said both serial numbers are twelve. Yeah. Why the number twelve? Why is that important? Well, when I got my first one, I was the first customer outside the factory, 
But do you have a weird 12 thing? Like Jerry no, has no. a thing with nines? No, I don't have a thing with 12. Oh, what okay. it was was they they, uh, they had 10 Ford GTs went to the family. The 11 Ford GT was sold for charity. I was the first customer oh, cool. for 12. So when the when I ordered my other Ford GT, they said, any Ford number you want? I go, isn't your other car number 12? You want the same thing? I said, all right, fine. That's cool, I see. So yeah. bookends. Yeah. Do you, do you have any number superstitions thing that you no, like? No, I don't have any series? number superstitions. No. Or numbers you like? I feel all numbers should be treated equally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any numbers. Uh, you know, no, I'm okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't get into any of weird. Yeah. Jerry's nine theory has contaminated all of us. Yeah. See, with this car, look, the Porsche Experience Center delivery. 10, 8, 1 plus 8 right. is 9. This is a lucky car. <laughs> This car will hold its value forever, this thing. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Wow. It's like initially with Porsche, why would you buy a 6 when you get a Corvette with a V8? Yeah, yeah. yeah because it's all cylinders. Who has right. the most cylinders? You know, it's funny. On the Tonight Show, we'd always have these baby animals. You get like a baby tiger or a baby lion. <laughs> And it reminded me of this because you feel it. It's so solid. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you're squeezing yes. Its, yes. its stomach, and it's it, it's 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 like squeezing back at you. Right. And right. It, it's so strong, yet it's so so small and agile. You mm -hmm. know. I mean, I put the lion down and thump 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 thump. These big feet would move around. You know. And you pick the thing up and you'd hold it. It was so like this. It was just so solid. Right. You could never find a flaw. Or, or any fat on the thing. It is an interesting sleight of hand that Porsche has pulled off with this. You know, not trying to eat. See, here's what I don't understand. They, they'll, they'll say they don't want to eat away at their 911 GT3 market. Right. But there aren't enough of those cars to go around anyways. People can't get a GT3, you can't get one. Well, that's right, so, and that's what makes them so valuable. Right, but the worst thing you can do is make one more than they need. So I think they looked at that and they said, "Well, it's not going to eat our 911 market at all. Let's give these guys what they want, which yeah. is we want a 911 engine Cayman, and here it is." Right, right. The GT3 engine Cayman. So in the, I guess in the regular GT4 they have the turbo engine without all the turbo stuff on it. Right, right. But this is a GT3 racing engine. Well, Spike, thanks for bringing this car by. Just, uh, you and Jerry become my go-to Porsche guys. You, <laughs> you know all the serial numbers, you know the secret codes, you know the, what do they call them? Good wishes, what's the name of the Special thing? wishes. Special wishes. Special wishes. That's very funny. Well, it's a special wish of mine to continue to come back on your show. And of course, it's one of the great uh, podcasts, uh, Spike's Thank Radio you. Thank Podcast. You. We need to have you back on. Let, Let me, anytime. Looking for Thank you, again. my friend. Appreciate it. Spike's Car Radio. Check it out. See you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.